Oh, and welcome to the fourth part of this series on how to create a login and register using PHP and MySQL. In the previous part, we just finished up this init.inc.php file, and in this part of the tutorial, we're going to move on to our register page so we can register our users. Um, there is no PHP code in the moment, but there is some HTML. We have just our regular doc type and our HTML and our head. Um, which I don't need that style in there, that's from my default page, but and then we have our just title and we have this body and in the body we just have this form. The form, um, I'll give you a moment to copy it out while I explain it to you. Uh, it has a method of post and a blank action. That means that the action of the form is this page. Now I have a tutorial on HTML forms and PHP processing of them. If you don't understand this um, little piece here. Go check that out because that will explain everything to you in greater detail. Um, so I have four inputs. I have a text input with a username and a password input with a password ID or a name. I have another password input which is the repeat password and then I have a submit button with a value of register. And then I just have a label for each of them so you can tell what they are doing. I will go and open up that file. Oh my gosh, I don't know why my computer is being so stupid, but um, we'll go to register. And you can see that's all that we have. Nothing too special. If I click this register button, it doesn't do anything. It just resubmits to here. So that should be sufficient enough time to copy it, especially because you can pause the video. So we shall get started. Up in the top block of the PHP, um, the first thing that we're going to do, and we'll do it on all of our files, is include the um, init file. So we'll include core forward slash init dot inc dot php. I'm going to refresh this page to see if I have any syntax errors with my init. Um, I'll refresh like that. And there are no uh, errors right now, which is a good thing. Now, um, we're going to break it down a couple of lines and we're going to start our form processing. So first we want to see if the form has been set. We do this using the isSet function and we'll check isSet on the post variables of the username, password, and the repeat password. So if isSet um, post username post I oh, can't type. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Password post repeat password. And we'll open up that block. Beautiful. Ah, zoom out one. Bam. I hope you can still see that. Ah, I'm going to fix this view. I apologize. Restore default one, two, three, four. There we go. Now you guys can see again. You probably could have seen just fine that I'm being stupid, but that's okay. So now that we have this um, checked, if the form has submitted, we want to check and see if there are any errors within what they have submitted to us in the form. First things first, we're going to check all about the username. Our first check on the username will be using the empty function. The empty function um, checks to see if there's actually value in it. It's not a blank string. So if empty, uh, post username. So if that is empty, we want to tell them that there's an error. So we're going to use our errors array, which means we can find errors, uh, square bracket, empty of them, and then equal to the error that we want to display. So please enter a username. So if the username is not empty, so we're going else here, we want to take another check. So else if um, username free. Actually, no, the next thing I'm going to check is the string length. So if you remember correctly, um, my string length maximum for a username is 20 characters. That's how much I set it in the MySQL database. That is how much I'm going to check it so that they can't insert information that's too long and then it gets all messed up when they try to log in. So else if string length of the post username uh, is greater than 20 errors 
and we'll add another error to the array and that will be please or your username may not exceed 20 characters beautiful now if that doesn't fail we'll check another thing else if and we'll use the uh, function that we defined username underscore free so if the username uh, which again we'll give it this post username um, variable and if you remember the username free function checks to see if there is the username in the database if there is or if it's not in the database meaning the username is free it returns true if the username is in the database meaning someone already has it it returns false so we want to check it against false so if post username is equal to false uh, we'll add another error the errors is going to be that username is already in use please choose a different one and that's all the checks that we're going to be doing on our username you might want to do other ones for instance to prevent people from using symbols or whatever I'm not going to for the uh, purpose of this tutorial so the next thing we're going to check is if the password is empty if empty uh, post password and if that is true we are going to tell them to enter a password please enter a password just like the check for the username now uh, that's all the checks we're going to do for the password. I'm going to let anyone's password be as many characters as they want, etc. As long as the password matches the repeat password. So, um, basically, you can check right now if uh, the empty repeat password and tell them to enter a repeated password. However, that's not actually necessary. Since you check if this is empty and make sure that's not empty, then when you check if the two of them are equal, um, if the other one is empty, it will not return equal. So what we're going to do here is say else if uh, the post password does not equal to, so exclamation mark, equal sign, equal sign. I have a tutorial on operators if you don't know the does not equal to. It teaches you a bunch of a whole load of them. So um, if it does not equal to the post repeat password, um, which goes right here, repeat password, um, we're going to open it up and the errors will be your passwords do not match. And that is all the error checking that we have to do. If there are no errors up until this point, it means that there are no errors. So. What we're going to do is use the empty function again. So if empty errors, meaning there are no errors, we're going to uh, use the add user function. Add user again. It takes two parameters. The first one being the um, username. The second one being the password. And from there, what we're going to do is redirect them to the login page. So we'll redirect our header, location, login.php, and then we'll exit the script. And that is all of the top um, logic that we need to do for this code. What we now need to do is, if one of these uh, errors is set, then we're going to have some errors, and uh, we want to display those errors too the user. So what we're going to do is check uh, if the errors array is empty. So if empty errors, but we want to check that against false. The um, reason being is if there is an error, then it will not be empty. So and we're going to open up a bracket and then we'll close our PHP and reopen it down there because we need some HTML in here. The HTML, uh, HTML pardon me, that we need is uh, the starting of an unordered list and the finishing of one. And then we need the starting of a list tag and the ending of the list tag. And then we'll, in between these two, start up our PHP again. Now, if you remember from my last tutorial, or one of my other tutorials, it's probably not my last one, but I don't know, 
Um, I used a for each loop here and then I echoed out in between a list tag each time. However, there's a more efficient way to do this. You can take you uh, make use of the ex or implode function rather. Now the implode function is opposite to the explode function in that it takes uh, an array and combines all of the elements into a single string on a character. So, for instance, if this is your array, so this is my array, each of these lines is a separate key, what the implode function does is um, puts them all together using uh, the character you provided. So say you provided it with a space as the character, then what it would do is have this is my array in a single string. So hopefully that makes sense. If not, again, if you need an implode tutorial, ask me for it. I mean, if you've already asked me for the explode, I'll do explode implode. You get two in one deal because I'm awesome like that. Um, otherwise, just ask me for it, and then again, you'll get two in one. So, yay. So what we're going to do is we're going to echo the imploded on, again, two parameters. First parameter is what you want to implode on. So what we're going to implode is the ending of a list, and then item, and then the starting of a list item. And we're going to obviously implode errors. So basically, I'll just uh, show you this with a little demonstration. Um, if we have error one, error two here, so that's our array of errors. Um, error 1 would be echoed out and it would go right there. Now since there's another array key we need to have our glue which is these characters right here and then it would put out this last error and then obviously we're um, down here we have that too. So now if you look you have two list items using the implode. Um, again I hope that makes sense not just try and think about it. The other thing to note is the implode will not implode if there is only one element. So if there's only one element it will just echo out that error and it will be between these two. So what I'm going to do is bring this all up onto a single line to make it look much nicer because looking awesome is part of being awesome when you're coding and we'll save that up and that is your register.php file totally finished and um, now we're going to check to make sure that it works so we're going to refresh here actually we're not going to refresh we're going to go back to this link no errors that's a good sign so we're going to first try and register Dylan with a password of one and then a password of two so our passwords do not match we'll click register our passwords do not match if we click register again, please enter a username, please enter a password. If we enter Dylan with passwords of test and test, register, you see we get redirected here. If I go back into my base, or into my table, um, you can see that Dylan has been added. Now, if I go back to register, and try and re-register Dylan uh, with passwords of 123 and 123, register, that username is already in use, please choose a different one which means that our, or our register is working, which means that I'm going to end this part here, and in my next part, we will be tackling this login page. Big scary login page. So, thanks for watching, um, please join me in the next part. Thank you.